살짝 Your lords and masters 19 of the Genesis of Androzani Advent Calendar. It's me again, Elytron, also known as Callum. Hope you're all having a fantastic December. Hope you're enjoying the Advent Calendar per usual. If you are enjoying the Advent Calendar, make sure to subscribe to the channel. Make sure to follow uh, Connor's Twitter uh, down below. I can't remember what the, uh, the actual like thing is. But you can also follow me on Twitter as well. And you can check out my YouTube channel at Elytron as well. So yeah. You can go follow all those links. I am back once again and here to do a video that, again, much like day 16, which was the unpopular opinion of me. I hope you go and check that out before this because I think it was a pretty good video that I did and I hope you enjoy it if you haven't seen it already. But today we are doing a thing that's quite regular in YouTube in terms of Doctor Who communities. I am doing what Connor Van have also done. I am doing my top 10 Doctor Who stories. Yes, I'm compiling all of the stories I have seen and putting them all into a top 10 list of what I think is the best Doctor Who content out there. So, just to preface this, um, every single entry on this list is from New Who. Sorry to anybody who watches Classic Who. Um, mainly because... I haven't watched a lot of Classic Who. Uh, I've watched a few stories, about I think like around 10 stories. Not, I don't, I don't think anyway, any of them that I've seen, that I have seen anyway, apart from Genesis of the Daleks, so that one I have to give a rewatch. That's the only one that I could probably potentially get onto this list. But the rest I have, I don't feel would get it onto the list anyway. But one day, maybe on my own channel one day, once I've watched more Classic Who, I can then properly redo this list and include maybe classic who stories because I'm, I'm i think there is definitely competition there for um places for sure um yeah this is gonna be an interesting one and i know i already know already that there's gonna be stories that have been missed that, that people are gonna comment on oh how did you leave this out or how did you leave this out i'm going purely from a it's a mix of what I think are extremely well written episodes and episodes I also just love unconditionally. There's a lot of stuff that I God I there was like twenty episodes that I wanted to include on this video and on this list, but Matt, it was they're all so tight together in terms of quality. So there's going to be even ones on the top ten list. You probably say, why is it not? Why is that higher? Or why is that so high? Why is it this higher? You know it's difficult it's difficult to go, to go through but yes top 10 doctor who stories we're going to start out with number 10 number 10 is dalek yeah right off the bat we're going an episode that i would consider pretty much perfect it is one of the best introductions to a doctor who monster i think the show has had and yeah i just think everything about this episode is so well crafted from the introduction of the dalek what a way to introduce a monster and make them actually threatening in almost every aspect holy cow this thing is scary it get it it gave me nightmares when i was a kid it was the thing that it did in classic who it gave people nightmares the whole hide behind the sofa thing was iconic from the from daleks and this episode gave that to me when i was a kid when i watched this for the first time and when i thought about daleks in general they gave me frights and they gave me scares and they really scared me as a kid but everything else of this episode is pretty much perfect like the doctor is amazing in this story in terms of the character writing for him the sort of first real chance we really see why he has changed so much from classic who which i can now having looking back on some stories and even just some clips in general i can see what time war has done to the doctor on a mental level and 
oh god just wow the performance from christopher eccleston is immaculately perfect rose is great in this story the setting is great the characters apart from adam all the characters are fantastic the pacing the music the direction everything about this story is pretty much perfect and i absolutely love this it is probably one of the best written stories for a dalek ever made you know the only one i could really see rivaling it is um genesis i know there's a sylvester mccoy story that a lot of people high praise of and i look forward to seeing that one day but man this 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 story is amazing so if this is number 10 what would you expect the other nine to be there's going to be some choices that you will question for sure but dalek is just an amazing ride of fear adrenaline and just pure just bombastic fearful amazing st content of writing and just the execution of it just i love every second of it brilliant brilliant story it's a 10 out of 10 100 percent so that is number 10 and now we move on to our uh, visit there are going to be a couple of these that i think people will question but okay number nine is amy's choice i think i'm quite known not so much lately i think there's a lot of people that um have not seen me talk about this episode a lot but amy's choice without a doubt is my favorite episode of series five and i will say 11th hour was so close to getting onto this list because i've recently rewatched it and man oh man it's so good it is so good and it just missed out on this list it's like 11 which is ironic but it's 11 for me pretty much it was so close to make it onto the list but Amy's Choice, the reason why it's my favourite episode of Series 5 is just the idea itself is so... It's amazing. The execution of it and how it's revolving around these characters is so well done. Amy's Choice, without a doubt, is my favourite episode of Series 5. There's no doubt about that. Just, I think the acting is sublime throughout the entire thing. I think the direction is sublime. I think the cold, that cold open is probably my favourite in Doctor Who because I just love everything about it and the final line of Matt going this is going to be a tricky one oh, just that is the icing on the cake that's the cherry on top of the cold open just absolutely love it the dream lord Toby Jones holy cow is he good holy cow is he good the acting from him and just the idea and got that scene of them in the in the van when he goes the the timeline uh, prefers the company of the young does he not of just like him not being a really true friend to any of his companions because one day he just leaves i think that's such a great moment in the episode and a great little bit for smith's smith's doctor and just the doctor in general and then obviously the ending i think is great a little linger of the dream lord because it's revealed that the dream lord is a part of the doctor the sort of dark side of the doctor is so well done and i absolutely love it and the story just in general is just really fun the whole idea of is this possible is this possible and the fact that it's just all dream but it's done well and it's not done in a way that is cheap in any way because there's a classic thing when you do a story of oh it was all just a dream it can feel quite cheapened but this doesn't do that because that's the whole idea of the story i love amy's choice it is absolutely amazingly done i just love it i love every second of this story just absolutely love it and this was the first time that rory died and it actually felt meaningful even if it was a dream it felt meaningful acting in this in this episode is great fantastic love amy's choice in, like incredibly underrated incredibly underrated so now my number eight is gridlock which is an episode that obviously of course everyone have seen on this channel at the time of recording this is the last episode that both connor adam and jake have all reacted to and i'm in the same boat as them where i think this episode is vastly underappreciated and is one of the best written stories in the show without a doubt 
because of how how much this means to not only series three all the implications all the setup and also that obviously the final scene with martha and the doctor and the sort of respect that do the doctor gains from martha actually sort of putting her foot down amazing moment but not only is the story so well paced so well written and the actual themes of the episode that work with those elements create a beautiful episode and then we get to the final scene of this episode where the doctor where david tennant becomes the doctor truly for the first time and that isn't me saying that in series two he wasn't he absolutely was the doctor in series two but what i mean by that that's where his doctor the true real ideal of the 10th doctor that's where he comes alive and that's when he really shines because in gridlock david tennant is amazing his character writing is impeccable and it really set off what would be the best run in doctor who i would argue with the end of series three and then going into series four holy cow the character writing is so rich and so pure and so well built up and the acting from david tennant in that scene is amazing just the sort of quiver in his lips when he talks about gallifrey talking about the sun how he would shine the the redness of gallifrey amazing amazingly acted everything about this episode in terms of a, a contained story itself is really fun it's energetic it's a really interesting idea and it's really well done and all the elements work together so well every element works together so well and then that the how it all means so much to the season as a whole is brilliant and so well crafted by rtd man oh man i absolutely adore this story and it's so underappreciated and i mean that at the bottom of my heart gridlock along with Amy's choice i think are episodes that are so criminally underrated and are some of the best written stories the show has done and i think more people should pay attention to those stories because the actual writing the actual writing that's done is incredible to watch how everything unfolds but then even just from a direction the music just everything Again, oh, I'm going to say that a lot for all of these stories, but it's true. All these stories and every element in terms of writing, music, acting, amazing, impeccable. Some of the best TV has ever seen. Just, I love it. And Gridlock is a part of that. And it's a fantastic episode that people need to start loving because... Brilliant. That's all I can say. It is just brilliant. I love Gridlock. And I love Seven even more, which is an episode that I've gone, I would say, even more so. For Adam, Gridlock is that sort of episode where it's so important for a character, which is the 10th Doctor and Martha. My next one is my version of that. Just, <laughs> despite, obviously, Gridlock being one below it and I have similar feelings of it. Now, my number seven is The Fires of Pompeii. This is, I would argue, this is the, this is the most, this is the most incredibly underrated episode in Doctor Who, and one of the most underrated episodes of TV ever made. Fires of Pompeii is, without a doubt, my favourite story that isn't written by RTD, or, I, I can't remember who wrote it specifically, it's an awesome thing, but, Fires, again, Fires of Pompeii, is beautiful it is tragic it's amazingly written the villain is so it, it's wacky in a way but it works so well within the story and the villains themselves are quite interesting but what makes this story amazing is donna and the doctor their story together and how this relates to the time war how this is almost like how the doctor what the doctor did in the time war sacrifice people to save everyone else is beautiful the music is amazing the direction is great 
but the acting of Catherine Tate and David Tennant is amazing. Utterly incredible. Fires of Bombay is my favourite episode that is not written by RTD and Stephen Moffat. I've put um, an episode higher than this that isn't written by either of them because I think in terms of an objective level and an objective standard, it is better. But Fires of Pompeii, I think that that is my favourite episode that's not written by RTD in the uh, RTD era. I think it's that underappreciated. I think everything about Fires of Pompeii and how it actually goes into Waters of Mars is amazing. How that sets up that story. Just... <laughs> Amazing! I absolutely love this episode. Fires of Mopay, also the ending as well, how this relates to Capaldi as well. It goes into, obviously, when Capaldi becomes the Doctor, it's referred back to in that scene in a bad episode, but that's the best part about it, referring back to this episode because of how important this episode is, not only to Tennant, to Donna, but Capaldi as well. Just amazing, and I absolutely love it love fires of pompeii and you should too it's a fantastic episode oh boy <laughs> this is we're already four in and there's already so much to talk about in terms of what i love about these episodes so now we get into number six which is bad wolf slash the parting of the ways the finale of series one and i think for quite a, what, a long time i've loved this episode always but i think there's been times where i've been really underappreciated of it and i think recently i've sort of come to like that this story is so well done within series one not only is it a great thrill ride and not only is it the daleks properly being back and being so threatening and scary and just vicious and violent how this connects everything in series one is amazingly done. What Russell does in all his finales is how he connects the world to the overarching story is incredible. And I don't know how he does it sometimes, but he did it and he hit a home run in season one, in series one. Just wow. The fake out of Rose's death is brilliant. How they set her up is brilliant with Lydia, uh, obviously with the Doctor. And they're actually you believing that they've killed Rose is actually incredible how that's done. Captain Jack Harkness is absolutely so funny in Bad Wolf, but so amazing as well. And obviously in Parting of the Ways, he's also that. Just so... Oh, I just love every character of the Doctor in that final scene with the Daleks and Rose coming back and then the sort of kiss they have which actually has been building up romantically because there are scenes in series one that actually build to that moment but then we get the final scene with Elkiston which is probably the most beautiful I think regeneration scene because it's this arc of nine becoming this kind of bitter and lone wolf kind of person to have that scene of not forgiving himself but letting himself be happy and letting himself die happy and the final lines like and you know what so was i saying he's fantastic is beautiful i love it i love that scene so much and obviously we get the introduction of tenant there's also great stuff. The game shows in Bad Wolf are just so amazingly well done. It's so funny. I love all of them. The Weakest Link is fantastic. The Android. Amazing. Obviously got Big Brother, which not much was actually done in that, but it's still quite funny. And then you obviously got the show Jack was on, which I can't remember what the show was actually called that it was referencing, but that was amazing just for Jack. Beautiful and, a fu and funny. Beautiful and funny amazing love it so yeah this is probably one of the it's definitely one of the best finales and one of the best written finales russell totally outdid himself in this uh 
in this story. Amazing. Love Bad Wolf slash The Parting of the Ways. 10 out of 10. So now we move on to number 5. Number 5 is The Empty Child slash The Doctor Dances. Moffat's first ever story for Doctor Who. Officially, because he obviously did the spoof. This is such a art house story. And everything about it is great. The Empty Child, a very dark, dingy, sort of gritty kind of first episode with a, a scary premise of you becoming just a zombie in a sense, but it's such an iconic villain in the Empty Child slash Gas Mask Zombies. Gas Mask Zombies, sorry. And part one is just amazing. The introduction of Captain Jack, we just obviously talked about him, but he is fantastic in this, being quite likeable but dislikable at the same time, and that's throughout the story. Nine is great in this, the sort of detective aspect of this episode. Nancy is a really good character and has so much well-established motivation and character stuff in this, and it's fantastic to see. The direction is great. The music is fantastic. Just both of those things are beautifully done i love both of them holy cow they're so good and then that's the same with the doctor dances when it, it's ending and the reveal of everything is so well done and the ending of the episode the first time for the doctor since the time war where everybody lives is a great moment a moment that's been building up because of how much sort of like darkness that's been surrounding him this is the first time where he truly was happy truly felt the right thing was done truly that just life was be was able to continue it's just a beautiful beautiful moment obviously jack coming on board it's amazing and i absolutely love it this episode is also just so well structured well plotted out everything makes sense everything's set up amazing love it absolutely love this episode this story amazing empty child and the doctor dances brilliant that's all you can say now we get into the real nitty-gritty stories that really leave an impression on you and really change the the game that was doctor who so now we get into number four which was turn left holy cow this you can see where RTD got his motivation to do Years and Years because Turn Left was the motivation for Years and Years, which obviously me and Connor have reviewed uh, earlier, way earlier in this calendar advent, you, advent calendar. You can go and check that out at day seven, I believe. But this story is so dark. It is so dark. And I love every single second of it. And it shows why Donna is absolutely the best New Who companion, without a doubt. She is incredible. Catherine Tate's acting is just on another level. The best acted companion in New Who. There's no doubt about that. There's no competition, I don't think. As good as all the other ones are in the RTD era, specifically. She takes the cake. And she's amazing. She is incredible as an actress. And the writing for it, Rose Tyler is fantastic in this. The sort of idea of it, of the world without the Doctor. How would it crumble? And man, it's dark. It's so dark. The reason why Donna is able to get out of this parallel universe thing is to kill herself. <laughs> RTD is so fucked up man he is so fucked up and i love it i absolutely love it and then how that leads into um stolen earth and journey's end brilliant bad wolf returning to warn the doctor just amazing it is just amazing it is so so good i love turn left so much series four in general is just amazing so now we get into number three, the top three stories that I think are the best in Doctor Who. 
Number three. Human nature slash the family of blood. One of David Tennant's best performances at the Doctor. Without a doubt, but it's not even him. It's not even the Doctor, it's John Smith. This story, how it is a great arc for Martha. How it really shows the kind of person the Doctor is. Why he can't love another person properly. And how John Smith is what the Doctor would be if he was human. Oh god, beautiful. Beautiful story. Jodie Redfern is fantastic. She is so, so good. The actress is great. I've watched her in years and years. And she is brilliant in that. And she's brilliant in this story. This romantic story that's built up in just two episodes. In just 45 minutes is just incredible. Paul Connell, I believe that is the writer. Writing an amazing story. An amazing love story. And an amazingly just entertaining story with amazing villains. Just Oh, the family of blood are so freaky, funny, but also just so scary as well. Just and so iconic as characters. The actor who plays um what's his name? He's in Game of Thrones, you'll know who I mean. He's fantastic. He is so good. Having watched obviously Game of Thrones season one, he is brilliant in both of these things, but here he's just so freaky but just so well acted the dialogue is fantastic for him and obviously all the scenes of like a dream of a normal death as music going into the scene of showing what life john smith would have had is beautiful and tragic and sad i just love this so much and obviously the scene of the doctor sending them all giving them what they really what they want but not in the way they really wanted it just that scene in general just really shows how scary the doctor can be sometimes and how he is a very kind person but he will give you that chance and if you don't take it bad stuff will happen and that really comes off because of the time war and I just absolutely love it. Martha is fantastic in this, and people underappreciate how this story really shows the sort of respect that Martha and the Doctor have for each other. That scene in the end where they're at the TARDIS and the Doctor says, thanks for looking after me, is brilliant because everyone always says that the Doctor treats her like crap, which is absolutely not the case in terms of when you look at this. And that scene literally shows that he appreciated what Martha did. What Martha did going head to toe for everything in that story trying her best to take care of the doctor and to try and figure out a way to get out of it just trying to do her best but the doctor knows and appreciates what she did and the fact that people ignore that is so annoying because they always say that the doctor treats like, like crap in a sense they are both bad for each other for what happens because the Mar Martha lies to the Doctor in the first episode of Series 3 saying that she's not interested when she's really interested and you can tell and the Doctor taking to the places that he that she that he took Rose the sort of rebound aspect is very much a part of the story and it's done on purpose but as the story goes on he, like with uh, Lazarus experience great scene at the end where she doesn't want to be a passenger and then he respects her enough to not treat her like one but then we get to human nature and family blood where she really comes out because she admits she loves the doctor romantically and we see in this story that he can't ever have that because of who he is it's beautifully done and a lot of people need to start really seeing what the story that Russell was doing in series 3 because it's massively misunderstood and really underappreciated and Martha is a fantastic companion she is better than Rose not as good as Donna but she is great fantastic fantastic character that people so many people underappreciate she is one of the best Doctor Who companions to be ever done and a lot of people just ignore what actually happens in the story and just say the Doctor treats, treats her like crap and that is not the case in terms of what actually is happening in this story in all of series 3 they respect each other but they are bad for each other and a lot of people need to start realizing that about series 3 because I hate that argument 
I hate it because it has no bounds and has no actual meat to it. They just say they treat that he treats her like crap. They don't actually explain why. <laughs> it's ridiculous. But yes, bit of a rant there. But yes, this episode is fantastic. Beautiful. Love it. Top two now. Number two is Midnight. Number two is Midnight uh, for a lot of reasons. One of Tennant's best performances. One of the best directed. One of the most uni unique ideas. The setting. The monster and how we never know what it actually is. All the characters surrounding the Doctor. The music. And Russell T Davies. The writing is impeccable. The writing is on par with some of the best written stories ever made. Midnight is one of the best television episodes ever. It is fantastic. It is brilliant. David Tennant is on another level in this episode. And I love everything about it. All the characters are great because of the fear that they constantly builds up and builds up and builds up is just immaculately perfect. Everything about this story is perfect. I cannot point out one single flaw with this story. Not one. I'm telling you, not one. Because this story is just perfect from head to toe. The setup, the funny parts in the beginning are really funny. But when it gets serious, when it gets quiet and when... The humans let the doctor down. And that touches that line of the person going, I said it was her. And the doctor gives her that, that look. Nah. That's ch chilling. And then the thing right after that where the doctor just goes, The hostess. What was her name? And no one knows. No one knows. And that, that hits you. That hits you. And that, I just love that. Midnight is so, so, so good. And the fear that the Doctor has in his face. Oh my god, when he actually thinks he's about to die. It, it, it sticks with you. It hits, it hits you differently. That's what it does. <laughs> yeah, I just love everything about Midnight. I cannot point out one single flaw. Much like with my number one. My number one. And I think if you know me well enough, you know exactly what episode this is. Number one is without a doubt the best written Doctor Who story. It's the one and only The Waters of Mars. And you know, all of you know exactly why this episode is number one. You know why this is number one. But I'm going to go through everything everywhere. Anyway, I'm going to go. I can't even talk. I can't even talk about how good this episode is. Direction, fantastic. It looks beautiful. The story, I like it so much. I just like it. I like it, I like it. It's so well crafted, so well written. How this relates to Fires of Pompeii that I talked about earlier. Amazing. And how this has been building up through the hints of fixed point in times, through the Doctor Swan mindset throughout Series 4. Beautifully done. All the side characters are amazing. Every single one of them. Even some that don't get that much screen time. What we get of them is really fun and really good. And just the latter half of this story. I just absolutely adore all these characters. Adelaide is brilliant. She's a fantastic one-off companion. And she leaves such a mark on the Doctor. That, is, that can't go unsaid. Just man oh man that scene when she kills herself. It's just... It sends chills down your spine. <laughs> but obviously, the reason why this episode is so good is to do with David Tennant and the writing around the 10th Doctor. Because this is what I've doubt. This is what I doubt um, David Tennant's best performance as the Doctor. Without a doubt. And it was his second to last story as well. So they really went all out as he was heading out the door. The 10th Doctor's writing is just impeccable. I love every single second of it. It is everything coming to a head that's been built up throughout his entire run since day one of his run and this has been building and building and building and finally he says no i'm going to help these people because i am a time lord the last time lord in existence and i'm going to do what i can do 
not what I think it should be, what is the right thing to do, what I can do. And that scene with Adelaide at the end, where they're talking about the time of Victorious. That's when David Tennant becomes actually a scary character, when the Doctor becomes a scary character, and you just actually kind of fear for what he's going to do. And then the regret of what he actually does in seeing what his actions have caused snap him back. And how that relates into his death is just simply beautiful. And I love every single second of this episode. Number one, The Waters of Mars. So yeah, The Waters of Mars is without a doubt the best Doctor Who story there is. But of course, I've got to watch more classic Who, so there could be something to rival it. Uh, you've obviously got Case of Androzani and the War Games, which a lot of people have a lot of praise for. So that hopefully one day, maybe I will go and see those episodes and maybe they will rival these episodes, which it absolutely could do. Absolutely it could. But I have to see them and have to properly assess them. But yes, that is my top 10 list of uh, Doctor Who stories. So we've got 10, Dalek, 9, Amy, Amy's Choice, 8, Gridlock, 7, The Fires of Pompeii, 6, Bad Wolf, Prying of the Ways, 5, The Empty Child and, and The Doctor Dancers, 4, Turn Left, 3, The Human Nature and The Family of Blood, 2, Midnight, 1, Waters of Mars. To be honest, if you knew me saying what this video was going to be, most of you should have known what number 1 was going to be, but yeah. Everything, oh, so many episodes I could have included on this list like 11th hour heaven sent uh boomtown had a shout because <laughs> i think boomtown is fantastic but yeah so many stories i could have gone onto this list that didn't but could have absolutely there's so many great stories in the show but you can tell that only one of these stories in the top 10 are um from the moffat era obviously you have uh, empty child that was obviously written by Moffat but you can tell that I think the Russell TD the RTD era is so well done and there's so many great 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 episodes in it just so many good stories amazing but obviously I've gone over all of it what is your top tens I would really like to know and what do you think of my list do you think I've really really just sort of let my RTD bias shine through but I feel like that I mean, I'm really looking at these stories objectively and the writing for most of them because I think Fire Pompeii, I subjectively would put it higher, but I want to have a mix of it being of what the actual quality of these episodes are and what I also love. But yeah, if you disagree with my list, let me know what you think I should change and what you, your lists are. Uh, thank you guys so much for watching. Thank you for going up and allowing me to be on the channel for another day. You're probably all getting sick of me already. Uh, but yes, thank you everyone so much for watching. And we will see you for day 20 of the Genesis of Androzani Advent Calendar. We will see you then. Take care.